It is Friday, August 16th. Let's talk PlayStation. So as always, we'll start with that PS Plus Instant Game Collection reminder for the month of August 2019. It is Sniper Elite 4. Wipe out the Omega Collection. You got two weeks left because we're halfway into August, so you better download these or add them to your library if you are interested. Now, just yesterday, Sony announced some new DualShock 4 colors, and it's been a while since we've had some new color variations, but these are looking pretty good. I'm going to be honest, these are coming in the fall. You're getting rose gold, titanium blue, electric purple, and red camouflage. And for that rose gold, you're also going to be getting a matching rose gold headset that will be available so there's not going to be any matching colors of the other headsets but at the very least rose gold which i think arguably will probably be the most popular color out of the bunch is getting a matching headset now i'm more partial to the titanium blue it looks a lot like that uh, japanese aqua blue ps2 i bought off ebay about a month and a half two months ago looks very cool has that like slate steelish kind of sheen but it's a very light blue very pretty looking controller i would definitely like to buy that and i probably will even though I shouldn't because I have enough DualShock 4s but that's kind of the problem when uh, they release all these color variations is that we don't need another controller but we want one. Now admittedly we haven't had a whole lot of PS5 stuff going around lately the games industry has been pretty quiet with leaks and rumors but that changes today albeit the source isn't the best source available which is this is coming out of 4chan and 4chan you know one of those places where there's definitely been stuff that's been right out of there, you know what I mean? Like, leaks do happen out of 4chan, but for every time that happens, there's like 20, 30, 40 some odd occasions where it's complete BS and total lies. So, as always with any rumor, take it with a grain of salt. But this is about the PlayStation 5 and also what we can expect out of Sony's next state of play. So, the entire post, to summarize, starts off with state of play saying that we can expect a new state of play November 1st, and this is going to include... Uh, a Death Stranding launch trailer, which not unusual, the game comes out around that time frame, so we're going to be expecting a launch trailer that happens with most games. Uh, Star Wars, not sure what's going to be in there, whether it's DLC or what have you, and then it would apparently end with Last of Us Part Two, a release date announcement for the month of May. Now, this is also not the first time we've heard of May. If you remember the timeline so far, we heard that they were internally targeting late 2019, then internally delayed it to early 2019. We heard the month of February from a few sources, and now we're hearing May from a few sources. So at the very least, not the first time we're hearing May for The Last of Us Part II's release date. But this is apparently coming from a marketing email that was obtained from a former Sony Interactive Entertainment employee. So that's just kind of the background of apparently where this information is coming from. So take that for what it is. Um, now that's the state of play. And it actually also says that specifically with state of play, they were moving Ghost of Tsushima away from that into the PlayStation meeting in February 2020. Now supposedly we are getting a PlayStation meeting February 2020, very much so like we did uh, during February 2013 for the PS4. So this will be the event where Sony showcases PlayStation 5, and I would assume it's very much so like that event in 2013, which is that the way they're describing it in this post, uh, Sony sending out invites to a number of third-party publishers, big publishers, mind you, like Activision, Square Enix, the, the usual suspects, uh, to come to the event, vouch their support for the platform, show a vertical slice of either their next upcoming games or tech demos or what have you. Again, just like that 2013 event. Um, so a bit formulaic because we've already had this exact situation during the exact same month, but it did work for Sony, and that's what uh, the post claims is that uh, based on what happened previously, that's what they're doing again this time around to show us PlayStation 5. And so it does explicitly state uh, Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima uh, are going to be held at this event to showcase, you know, them running on next-gen hardware and, you know, what's capable and, and things like that, um, which I would find slightly odd just in the sense that the game still wouldn't be released yet if they're showcased a little bit further in February because if The Last of Us Part 2 comes out in May and then Ghost of Tsushima you would assume probably closer to holiday 2020. I guess for Ghost of Tsushima it would make sense it could possibly be a multi-generational re release if it comes out very close to the targeted PS5 release date but for something like Last of Us Part 2 it'd be weird to show the game on PS5 hardware even though we know it would be on PS5 hardware eventually to say you know hey the game's coming out in May and then guess what it's going to come out what, five, six months later on substantially better hardware. So that seems a bit odd, although, I don't know, this wouldn't be the worst thing in Sony's playbook. Uh, and then at the end of the post, it claims that PSVR 2, uh, apparently the marketing team is starting the early consultation phase of how they're trying to possibly present and market the device. And they want to start this process before the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. So that also isn't super unusual, I guess, 
based on the fact that we know 100 percent and this is from sony mind you where they said they're not going to showcase next generation playstation vr alongside next generation playstation hardware they don't want to overwhelm consumers with two expensive products release their main one show the next one later and so that's the thing i guess we could take the most out of this post is that nothing in here is really that crazy i guess the source of where it's not necessarily 4chan but the way that they're describing where the information comes comes from strikes me as a bit odd all from the marketing team from an email a former employee is you know that's where it can get messy it sounds like it could or it could go both ways right um but the information itself isn't totally odd there's nothing really in here that says or that screams all oh, this is fake 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 i mean this could really happen now the timeline we've been discussing for a while and it's a very old rumor at this point six plus months maybe closer to a year now this rumor we've been discussing which is that we heard sony was we're going to do a PSX 2019. That's where we'd see more of the, the hardware. And then it would target holiday 2020. I'm still going to ho target holiday 2020 in all likelihood, but it was a matter of when we'd get a reveal event. Would it be PSX or would it be something in early 2019? And to be honest, as we said on it more, and as I personally said on it more, PSX, as cool as it would have been to, you know, bring the hardware there for the fans, uh, it, you know, something substantial like a hardware reveal, it's going to be nothing but press, right? You're not going to be able to go to that event unless you're a very credible source uh representing uh the press in some way shape or form that's just kind of the way it is so you can't really bring major ps5 hardware for the first time and show it off to a bunch of fans i mean it's just not really uh the businessy type thing to do i guess would be the, be the the best way to put it right uh so I, I wish it wasn't as formulaic as they're making it seem but if this is the case you know it's just it's not really odd i think it's just more interesting to think okay well if they're going to do the exact same thing they did with ps4 back in february 2013 which is that it's an hour long two hour plus event really that event was two hours long you know what would we really see i mean sure sony's going to show us the well they might not even show us the hardware they didn't do that um with ps4 but we're going to see mark on stage discuss some technical specifications we'll probably get some remote play action and it wouldn't be on vita unfortunately it would be on smartphones and computers and things i think we could expect something like that no doubt uh, possibly their next uh, form of playstation now which is that they'll probably give us some some numbers of like how much latency they've gotten it down and the efficient efficiency of you know all the cloud and server tech that they've been uh, buying up recently with their deal with microsoft they've got to talk about that to some effect of how much better it's going to be on playstation 5 and how much better it will retroactively be on playstation 4. um you know they're gonna have probably some first party studios like sony santa monica show us a little teaser of what their next gen ps5 stuff's going to be uh you've got to figure guerrilla games is going to show us uh, probably a trailer not just a teaser but rather a trailer of uh, horizon 2 or their their secret project that we've been discussing for a while because they're doing two teams now going into a bigger office space and then the third parties uh, you know they're, they've also got all these titles that are really well known at this point but of course they have a lot of secret projects as well so it really depends on which ones want to actually bring something you could have square enix show up and just show us another <laughs> another demo reel that doesn't have anything substantial in it and just say oh yeah well wait for e3 right um so it's not that's what i'm saying this information isn't necessarily wrong or, or super off or could be considered fake but rather it's just something that most people could probably say oh yeah this is going to happen and it's very believable um if it's going to happen i don't know that's the thing on this channel we always talk about every rumor that seems to make a lot of sense we hold on to those rumors for a while and sh and fact check them as we go right and so for something like this we will hold on to this and see just how accurate or not accurate it is uh, as always stay tuned to the channel but while we're on the topic of next gen platforms there was also an interview this past week between take two ceo stro zelnick and cnbc and most of the interview pretty boring it was about rockstar's games and their stock price but towards the end it was about uh, photorealism in games and so Strauss was actually uh, mentioning how we've got next-gen platforms coming and he discussed how between a computer image and real life you're gonna have a hard time telling the difference and he said that's not the case for every game certainly but using Borderlands as an example some games are approached in a different manner for their animation their presentation so for Borderlands it's you know a cell shaded animated type looking game and that's just the direction that they chose to go with the game not necessarily hardware constraints certainly but that's what he was discussing is that moving forward the, the uh, creators at Rockstar will be able to do so much more on next-gen hardware and we're going towards photorealism and I only like to bring this up because it's a solid reminder once again that 
so many people are excited for next gen they're excited for scarlet playstation 5 and they want higher frame rates higher resolutions but remember <laughs> consoles are a closed box and if you give a developer a chance to increase their visual fidelity to knock something else they will do that i still am baffled how many people just think that uh, frame rate and resolution are just these metrics that have to be reached when that's just not the case whatsoever. You've got 60 frames per second games on 3DS, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. You can go 20 years back and you can find high frame rate games. It's always how the developer chooses to allocate their resources. Of course, more horsepower is always great, but at the end of the day, they always like to pursue more graphical fidelity because that's just uh, a marketing ploy. I don't want to say ploy, but that's one of those things where it's just the research has been there is that consumers are wowed at prettier graphics and uh you know when you have that big cinematic trailer on television before a baseball game uh in the middle of uh, the super bowl you know that's just what people see and they that's what they ooh and ah you know you can't sit there and it's just not a marketable thing to say 60 frames per second or 120 this that and the other but at the very least it's a great to see this this trend recently with PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, which is that a lot of developers are allowing the allocation of those resources. And so because, and I think a, lot, a big part of that though is because we've got the baseline systems requiring and, and mandating that support for all games, right? There's no such thing as an exclusive PS4 Pro game or an exclusive Xbox One X game because PS4 and Xbox One are still the baseline uh, units. Developers sometimes don't have you know, they can't go that crazy with their game. So they allow you in the settings to either toggle it to a prefer frame rate, prefer resolution. It's been a good trend lately. It's it's a game by game, developer by developer basis, but it seems like it's a trend that's becoming more frequent. Now, if that stays on PS5 and, X, and uh, Xbox Scarlet, I don't know. I would hope it does. So that way it's the best of both worlds, right? You have these incredibly stunning, beautiful games that developers can market well, and you also have these preferences and settings to allow people to enjoy a higher frame rate in exchange for turning off ray tracing or you know, keeping the resolution at a minimum of 1080p or what have you, right? Uh, the option is always the best route. So here's a pretty cool update on Medieval PS4. You know, it's been pretty quiet with this game, but it's still coming out October 25th. Anyway, there was a dev diary recently published this past week, and it talks about you know, how the developers are approaching the game and how they went back and played the original to really get a feel for what they're trying to remake and, and bring back to light. And so a few details out of that dev diary was that uh, they've got the source code. They're, we, we've known for a while that they've been talking to some of the original team to discuss how they should approach it. But they're also discovering in that source code that there were some boss battles that never made it into the final games, kind of hinting at maybe they're exploring adding new content to the base game. Because if you remember, the base game was not really that long medieval was kind of short on ps1 a lot of games back then were were relatively short but uh, maybe we could expect some new content another thing in there that i found pretty cool was that they discussed how in the original medieval there were 56 separate enemies in the game like different models and uh, to be honest that actually is quite high even by today's standards 56 uniquely designed enemies is a lot um so that was actually also pretty cool. They said that that was actually a challenge because they're you know, developing the game with these modern textures and graphics and, and whatnot. So doing uh, 56 remakes of all these enemies they, they felt was actually uh, something that was a bit of a, a bit of an obstacle. So I, I found that pretty fascinating as well. But as a reminder, because it's been pretty quiet with this game, if you're in a medieval or maybe if you've never played it and you want this to be your first shot at trying to jump into this uh, long-standing PlayStation franchise coming out October 25th. Moving on, we've got an update on that tariff story that we've been following the past few weeks now, that 25% tariff that will take effect to video game consoles coming from China into the US. Uh, both Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo writing a joint letter to the Trump administration discussing the implications of what could possibly happen. Well, the update here is that the Trump administration has extended the deadline of when this will actually take effect. So previously, it was supposed to be September 1st, I believe. That's getting pushed back to December 15th. 15th. So this is actually them just throwing the console manufacturers and consumers a bone and developers and publishers a bone in that, well, go through the holiday season first, right? Everybody's happy. Consumers can buy their products. Console manufacturers can enjoy their full you know, income profit that they're expecting. Same with uh, game devs and pubs. You know, they're not going to lose out on, on uh, their game sales or anything like that. But then after December 15th, it will, it will take effect. And keep in mind, it's not like December 16th everything's going to get increased in price all of a sudden that's not really how it works i mean it'll still there'll be a, a bit of a 
crossover period where both Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, and everybody else kind of figures out what they're going to do to really handle this once it uh, does take effect. Uh, I, I'm sure that there is a, a team at every console manufacturer really scrambling to figure out what it is that they're really going to do because this is still a pretty big deal. And I've even had a few people um, ask me, and, and I thought it was pretty interesting. It, it was a good question for sure, but I've had a few people bring this up, which is that they're in different territories. So they may not be in the US, they may be in Europe or in the East, but even, even still they're saying, would this affect my territory? And uh, the answer to that is that in an ideal world, it wouldn't. However, it's not unusual to think, and I'm sure it's actually on the table right now and being considered that Sony could consider a situation where to offset any price increases in the US, they could increase prices in other territories as well. So instead of having this massive bump in the US, which is a very important market, not to underestimate all the other markets and all the other countries in the world, but that could be a situation where because of how important the US is, they could offset any costs that have to be eaten by the consumer by also leveling it out to multiple countries and territories to to help it that way. I mean, in all honesty, it actually seems like kind of a good option because um, it, it would be quite bad to, to eat the full 25 in the US, whether Sony eats the full 25%, especially for new a new hardware launch coming next year. Say this, if this 25% really does hold true throughout that whole time up until next gen launches. I mean, that's a big deal and 25% is massive. The US is just a market that they can't really afford to either take the substantial loss or even pass over 25%, right? So I think that is a thing that they are looking at. I hope it doesn't happen. And like I said, in an ideal world, it wouldn't affect other territories, but it would be foolish to say that's not a possibility right now. So uh, that's the update right now. It's not the best news in the world, but uh, as always, we'll, we'll Keep following this but anyway let's get into let's talk plus the weekly let's talk playstation giveaway where one of you could win a ten dollar psn code and i would like to congratulate Jay Lynn gibbons you have won i'll be contacting you very soon via email or twitter if you would like to win a ten dollar code it's very easy we do this every single week on let's talk playstation follow that link down below supporting the channel a number of ways can gain you an entry i'm just trying to pay for your game so Go ahead and enter. Those are all the news stories I want to talk about you all from this past week. So our Monday video was about PS3 hard drive data recovery. If it's corrupted, I corrupted my hard drive during the PSN name change video, and that was fun to say the least, but there's a process you can take to try and retrieve that data. And I think most of you should watch it, honestly. A lot of PlayStation fans don't realize that there's certain steps you can take to try and save the data. It's not a guarantee. You'll see in that video, but you know, there's you can there's things you can do. So go ahead and watch that. Also, I showed you my Proudest Platinum Trophies on Wednesday. And, you know, I think it's fair to say that I've ascended to a new level of thumbnail making with that one. And then the one from two weeks ago, put those bad boys together. You've got yourself a pretty tasty treat of eye candy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't really know. I'd say it's, it's neutral for now. Maybe like chaotic neutral. But, uh. We'll see where this road takes us. <laughs> uh, coming up on Monday or Wednesday, I don't know if we're going to do two videos this week. We probably will. Um, you know, Like I said, I've got a lot of ideas, so we're just doing more frequent videos. But it might also slow down because some of the projects are getting bigger, like documentaries and stuff. So, as always, follow on Twitter at Mystic Ryan for the latest, latest updates so you don't wait till the end of every Friday for these little one-on-one uh, -on -ones discussions that I have with you all. And uh, But follow on Twitter for... For that stuff and and more melissa because she's back there right now she was sneezing earlier you may have heard it in the audio i'm not sure if it'll show up but many of you have told me to leave that stuff so there you go you're gonna get more melissa whether she does or does not interrupt this show uh and that's it so that concludes this week's episode of let's talk playstation i'm ryan benecki thank you all so much for talking with me and i will see you all next friday 